All right, so here are the new LED boards. And uh, let's take a closer look at one of these here. And I'll get it focused. There we go. All right, so as you can see, uh, each one of these has a red channel. And the red, uh, uh, sorry, the red actually starts down here and goes around the outside, comes back to this one. And then the blue goes from this one to this one and then back. So if you look really close, you can see right there, there's actually an empty pad uh, right here. So I can have a royal blue there, or I can have a hyperviolet there. Actually, I can have any uh, 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 Luxion uh, Rebel ES or any um, uh, semi-LED uh, LED there. So these boards are kind of flexible, and of course all these does have to be the Luxions. Uh, but essentially, I have this this set right here. This is a, a pair. Uh, this is wired so that it comes in here, goes to the red, then goes to the violet, comes out, goes to the second board, does the same thing, and then back to the driver. All right. So that would be your base configuration, uh, which would be the uh, the simple version of the uh, of the. Uh, the scrubber, which comes with, uh, again, uh, one of the mean well drivers. So here, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. It's get real bright real fast. Here we go. Uh, so you can't really see much there, except because it's just kind of a blob of light. Uh, and that's uh, due to, you know, just the LEDs and cameras. They just don't really play well together. <clears throat> and, of course, you don't want to run these uh, without them being on a heat sink for very long. But uh, as you can see there... When you flip them over and point them down the table, which is a reflective surface, you can tell the difference between the intensities of the uh, hypervioles and of the reds. Uh, now, these are full current, 700 milliamps on everything, uh, and uh, as you can see, that that blue in there, or the the hypervioles, that's actually a 90 degree uh, dome, and uh, the um, the reds are 140 degrees, so they're a little tighter uh, on the on the uh, spectrum or the uh, uh, what do you call them the, the cone of effective uh, light. Boy, I'm really trying to stretch for that uh, that terminology. Anyways, um, uh, that is the full power standard setup. All right, so now we're going to switch over to the custom driver. I have this little hot wired up here for uh, <laughs> for purposes of this video and just for general testing. But um, let's take a look at the driver board first. And I will pull. I'm gonna pull a new one out uh, or a blank one out here, so that I don't have to unwire this other board. All right. So here we go. So here's. This is actually two drivers. Uh, there, the the PCB it comes like this. Let's see if we can get in there right close. All right. So this is where the line splits, obviously, right there and there. Okay. So what you have here is you have your external potentiometer input, your channel one, two, and three. So either you can do any any mixture, red, blue, or red, violet, red, or red, red, violet. Doesn't really matter. They're all 700 milliamp drivers. They all have their own onboard potentiometer and these are really small use a standard uh, Phillips screwdriver to turn them and then uh, a couple other components over here one of these is a 12 volt uh, this is for an external uh, 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 what you call it uh, this is for a controller power basically uh, input it says 24 volt on there that's how much it can take but these boards only these basically are uh, 15 volts is what you want across uh, into this, these two terminals right here. And then your PWM inputs, which have a common ground, one, two, and three. So if you're using a PWM uh, dimming on a controller, here's where your inputs go into. And then you got a voltage regulator and you got some other stuff in there. Uh, and uh, there's a little LED right there that's an indicator of when the power is on. Uh, but essentially, uh, that's it. It's, it's, a, it's a triple driver, and that's, that's really all it comes down to. All right, so what I've done is I've wired up uh, this tester here which uses a uh, just a something I got off of uh, um, off of Amazon it just has a 15 volt 
Uh, it's a switchable power supply, so it outputs DC 15 volt and however many watts you need, up to 70. Uh, these boards typically would take about 60 watts, and uh, or the driver input is 60 watts. That's what you want. There, the the power that you want it to be at. It doesn't actually take that much, but you want a little bit of overhead. And uh, with that 60 watt setting, uh, this is pretty much going to run perfectly efficient. There's going to be no no heat loss generated uh, by the board. If you want to dump 16 or 17 uh, volts into it, this is going to convert all that extra um, that extra voltage to heat. So it doesn't need to be heat on a heat sink, but for the most part, it won't matter. So here we go. Now, as you can see over here. You have a little LED on the driver board that turns on. And I'm going to adjust these potentiometers. You may or may not be able to tell uh, when I get to a certain point. I don't even know which channel I'm on here. Let's just dim them all down. There we go. Now you can really tell. Okay, here's the violet. I believe. And these are uh, continuously turning potentiometers, so when I hit the zero point, they'll just drop out. I'm not sure. There it is, right there. Okay. So there's a no man, there's a uh, no man zone in here where there's no power going to that channel. So, and then it goes to uh, there's full power, and there's there's about the minimum turn on right there for the violet and then we'll go all the way up to full power and you'll see it go down just a little bit right before it hits the off point right there there's a full power point okay let's turn that one off and now reds all right so that's that board right there all right so when I'm touching with the screwdriver, it kind of creates a uh, a little bit of a circuit there. So, anyways, so there's maximum intensity right about there. There's a cutoff, and then we go all the way down. And we can dim it down to actually about 10 percent, 5 percent, somewhere in that range. So you can see that's pretty dim right there. And we're gonna hit the no man zone here real quick, the dead zone. So that's there. Our driver's all off. Oh, something happened there. All right, so there we go. I haven't played with this enough to really know uh, what you should and shouldn't do. So I turned the driver, all three channels, all the way down to zero, and that little LED went off. Uh, there must be some kind of failsafe in there. But here you can see there's a maximum blues. And minimum red. Let's do minimum red. So how does that look? Well, it is what it is. Video of LEDs isn't really that, you know, great. So we'll just turn these reds all the way up. Whew. So you can really adjust these to wherever you want. Uh, and with so basically with an L2 here, I'm gonna unplug this. All right. With an L2, you're gonna have one board on each side and one driver. So one driver is gonna go on one side of the heatsink, and the other board is gonna be kind of not really a slave, but they're gonna be wired uh, like this. And and you can take a look at how I've got these wired up. You basically have um, red in, red out. That's one channel. Red in, red out. That's the other channel. And then the violet, it comes in to this one, jumpers back over to this one and back out. So these are one series chain. If you didn't pick that up in the video, that's what was going on. They're not, they're not on separate channels, uh, the two blues on each board. They're on the same channel across both boards. So on an L4, you'd actually have this set up on each fixture, but you'd only need one power supply. It just needs to be a, a little bit higher wattage, same voltage. So you'd actually uh, split from from this point right here, the plug on the power supply, or maybe inside the fixture itself, and then you jump her over, but it's before here, 
So you'd actually like just split the positive and the negative here and do a Y. Two, one goes there, one goes to the other driver. Um, that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, one other thing I want to point out here is that here's a maker's heat sink. So for anybody who still has a uh, maker's heat sink and they want to uh, maybe they have the individually mounted LEDs, these are designed, this is kind of tough to show here in a video, these are designed so that you can see that the, that the lane right there matches up there and the lane right there matches up. So these are actually designed to be backwards compatible with the um, the L2 Rev uh, 2, which is the before I had the um, the LED boards, I had um, I, I had individually mounted LEDs that were you know on stars that way, uh, which you can do if you want to. You can replace them with the boards, uh, or you can actually just mount the driver in there uh, because there is. Uh, space right here Let's grab another driver board Rather than trying to monkey with that one Okay, if you look right there All right, this lane matches up. This is the first lane that's used for LEDs It's this one this one and this one that are used on the rev on the rev 2 uh, With individually mounted stars, so you actually have clearance here. It's going to clear that lane, the bottom of that, that board. Remember, this is one board. This is a second one, so ignore the second board. Uh, you can replace this and use this one driver on an L2 or an L4. Um, and just you'd have to do a little rewiring of the LEDs, but that's not really that difficult. Um, so I, I've determined that. Also, uh, if you have a Rev1, uh, which I do have some fixtures. Hold on. So here's a Rev1, uh, individually mounted LEDs. Um, you can also retrofit this one with the new board and a new driver up here as well. Uh, you'd have to pick all these off. You'd have to drill the heat sink uh, and match up holes. And you'd probably want to, uh, you know, you have to do some additional wiring because these have to be cross-wired. Uh, there basically has to be another set of wires going back and forth between the blues to over to the driver. Um, so yeah, you can retrofit this one to their, uh, to all the uh, previous versions. Uh, and as far as, this is the, the, uh, the Rev3, this is the LED board that I used to use with the jumpers in there. You can make this all one series, and um, then you can just do a single channel uh, if you want to and just uh, run them all, use, uh, or, you know, with the, these, will get too intense if you do that so you can actually jump for those so that they're at half power um, well never mind that that's not gonna work I'm gonna cut that out of the video